Okay, hello and welcome everyone to the webinar. All, in, all attendees are in listen only mode. Um, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And so if you'd like to ask a question, uh, you can submit it using the chat box feature. The webinar will be recorded and distributed via email afterwards and also available at sentinelgroup.com. The SHRM activity code will be entered into the chat and also sent via follow-up email for all attendees. I also wanted to mention that we have another webinar coming up in the next two weeks to discuss employee wellness programs on 11.9. If you're interested, more information can be found on sentinelgroup.com. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Greg Kuwig and Fallon Carpenter to take it away. Thanks, Kendall. So my name is Fallon Carpenter. I head up people and culture at Sentinel. Um, I've been here for eight years, but have been in HR for 10 plus years. So benefits has always been a part of my role. So I'm happy to kind of discuss the changing landscape of open enrollment. Thanks, Fallon. And uh, my name is Greg Puig. I lead our group insurance practice. Uh, very excited to chat with everybody today. I know it's a uh, really busy time of the year for a lot of you with open enrollment. I understand not everybody's open enrollments fall this time of the year, but hopefully regardless of when it falls, uh, we'll give you some uh, good ideas and uh, good tangible takeaways as you go back, uh, go back into the chaos. So Greg, we're going to start with a poll just to kind of see what people, um, what are some of the biggest obstacles people are facing right now? So I'm going to... Give me a second here. Um, I'm going to launch. Looks like it's working, Fallon. Is it working? OK. No one has answered yet, though. No one's answering, so I'm wondering if it's not. So what we're doing, so in case everybody wants to know, we are launching a poll. So uh, it goes to show you, this is our first attempt. So try not to laugh too hard at us here. So I have it open, but I'm not sure if, okay. there we go. There we go, perfect. Thank you for bearing with us. So I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds, just again, trying to understand what everyone's business, business, biggest obstacle is when it comes to open enrollment. I'm going to share our results. And it looks like 50% is getting your staff to understand the offer offerings in general, which is great because that's a lot about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we feel that pain too, and we'll talk about different ways we can combat that. So thank you for bearing with us with our poll. So today we're going to talk about engaging with our employees, communication strategies, how to deal with open enrollment in a hybrid work world, education and integrated partners and platforms. And we'll end with some health and wealth information as well. So if you guys have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, everyone is on mute, so you won't be able to um, unmute yourself, but you can put the information in the chat and then we'll have a brief Q&A at the end. So engaging with your employees year round. So long gone are the days where we only talked about benefits once a year. Um, HR professionals have realized that these benefits are tools for us to help retain and recruit new hires. So it's important for everyone to really understand what their package is in and what the value that it brings. Because if they don't know that, um, there's, you know, they have no value to your employees. And so what that means is we recommend creating a defined benefit strategy. So instead of just focusing on open enrollment, Think about how you can communicate benefits throughout the year. Fun ways to engage your staff. And I'll show on another slide coming up what that could look like. Another thing is to be intentional in timing. So if you're spreading out different ways to engage your staff regarding the benefits you offer, make sure they're not back to back. So you wouldn't wanna do something in open enrollment in November and then something in December. There's just not enough time and it can be a very overwhelming topic. So make sure that you figure out a calendar that's going to work for you and highlight some of your most high level benefits that can really help your staff. And then if you can create a central place for your employees to find benefits. So one place that's easy for them to go in and navigate, finding the summary of benefits, finding the cost share breakdown is really important. And lastly, if they can access it outside of work, that's amazing. And, you know, years and years ago, I would have, um, 
wives of employees call me to walk through the benefits because their spouses were overwhelmed, didn't know where to find the information and didn't want to ask. So I've had numerous conversations with wives of employees walking them through the benefits. So if you can access it outside of work, that helps with that conversation. So they can really go through the different offerings, whether it's from their spouse's company versus your company and make the best decision for their employees. And this is just kind of a visual of what a year round strategy could look like. So at Sentinel, we do our open enrollment in November and we do a benefit overview. So we put together a guide, we do open enrollment meetings to again, establish what our benefits are and have opportunities to have conversations with our staff about what benefit is gonna be best for themselves or their families. In February, we actually launch benefit statements. So those are showing total compensation and benefits and the value working at Sentinel and our benefits offer to them in a total dollar spend. So that's another opportunity to really highlight what benefits you offer. And that can be anywhere from parks, that can be um, PTO, that can be your medical dental share, whatever that might be. It's nice to highlight it again outside of when they do their open enrollment. This year, we actually also added something called a flight plan, which is specific to a fly product that Sentinel offers. And what that does is it takes an employee's 401k balance and then gives them goals and objectives and things that they should be working on. And they can actually take that and work with a financial planner to have larger conversations about it. So that was a new thing we added this year and we got a good feedback on it. So they saw their benefits, but they also had a tool to kind of help work with some of the gaps that it might be facing. In May, we do an employee wellness month. So we focused on the whole month of May, we focused on to uh, reimbursement for fitness, so if you have a fitness plan attached to your medical plan, a great way to highlight that, that people can be re reimbursed for going to the gym. Um, EAPs to help with mental health. So again, you're taking tidbits of information of your benefits and spreading them across the calendar year. And lastly, in August, showing financial tools that you might have available. And if you are connected with a, a broker or a company for financial planning meetings, it's a nice way to show your employees you care about their financial wellness and you wanna provide tools that can help. Doing it in August really is a nice prep for our open enrollment in November because they can start thinking about you know, what they wanna focus on financially in the following year. So getting your employees to engage with their benefits. So this is um, you know, from the poll is an area that people really wanna focus on and can be really hard to do. So I hope some of the tips we give you will provide you some insight or, or change the philosophy you're using today. So again, you wanna aim to excite, not overwhelm. Now benefits sometimes are not exciting, but if you can find key areas to highlight them throughout the year that can make it fun. I talked about our employee wellness month. People love that, it engages them and encourages them to be healthy, get out there, move around and use the benefits that we provide to them to do so. So not everything can be exciting, but you can kind of, streamline different opportunities to make it exciting. You also wanna make sure it's simple, simple and digestible. For the folks on the call today, many of you work with benefits day in and day out, but the majority of employees don't really know that much about benefits, even the benefits that they're actually on. So making it digestible for them is really important. Avoid surprises. Now, that's something we cannot always control. If we have to change a benefit plan, um, if we receive large claims and our premium is going up, but what you do with that information and how you communicate it to your employees is really important. If you look at the stat here, they're saying 92% of employees choose the same benefit year over year. So if a plan is changing, it's a really great opportunity to get in front of the employees and explain to them what that means for them. A lot of employees might not open up their emails and they might be shocked that their benefit is different once they actually go to receive services. So different ways that you can get in front, whether you're doing short videos and sending them out, alerting them, uh, repetition is key. So if something is changing, you wanna hit them numerous times with that information. So hopefully if they don't see it the first time, they receive it the second time. And we're gonna go into communication strategy. So this stat probably is not surprising to many people on the call today, but 50% of employees don't understand their benefits. And I'll never forget when I offboarded an employee at another company. And as I was going through the benefits that were changing, that they were losing, they said, I didn't even know I had half of these benefits. 
And it's such a, uh, you know, whoa, you know, these are selling tools for us and, and people don't know what they are. So again, if you think about it from that strategy, how can we sell this as a reason for people to stay? Other companies might not have as great benefits that we do. So when we're thinking about retaining our employees and we have 50% who don't really understand the offerings, um, it's an opportunity for us. And another stat, 80% of people never open benefit communications. So that can be feel very defeating for those that are doing open enrollment and trying to figure out how to engage staff. But another way to think about it is your population of people. Don't just have emails going out. Think about where we can meet our employees at versus the communication style they wanna receive. Many like to go to in-person meetings. So make sure that you have um, in person or virtual where people can actually hear people talk and can ask Q&A questions. Some might just like the format of an email. They don't wanna be bothered. They wanna digest the information when they have time. Other parts of your population might actually receive text and be able to link into some of your information that way. And video is a huge new tool that people are using. Little tidbits of, of information that can be used by video that people can follow and they don't have to read lengthy emails could be another opportunity for you as well. So think outside the box. So again, if you go back to the different opportunities you have throughout the year, how can that be fun? How can you use the different tools your company offers? So do you have different Zoom channels or do you have a company internet page where you can use that as an alternate channel? You can still use email, um, you can use text, but other ways you can communicate to them and get their attention. Again, don't overwhelm them, but make sure that there is a repetitiveness to what you're saying because you wanna make sure they're receiving it. So there is a little gray area of to how many times you should be reaching out. Um, and explain, remind, and aim to excite. And to simplify. So employees don't like to receive wordy emails. And benefit emails can be overwhelming where someone could actually just shut down and say, I can't receive any of this information. I'm just gonna take the same benefit I did last year. This is too much for me. So if you can break down the benefit related messages into bite-sized pieces, that can be an easy way for someone to digest the information. So during open enrollment, if you have a drip campaign on different benefits you're offering and they can digest that on a weekly basis leading up to their enrollment, that's an opportunity. And the same can be said if you're doing a strategy all year long, use that opportunity to highlight maybe just one benefit. And again, if you can also use infographics short videos or just snippets of real life examples that can actually translate to your employee population. So being relatable and examples of how the benefit might actually affect them is really key for them to engage and understand. In open communication, we always like to carve out an open door policy, especially during open enrollment. You might have employees who sit in a meeting and they don't wanna ask a specific personal question on their benefits, but they really don't know what the plan that's gonna work best for them and their family based on many different factors. So if you can create an open door policy where people can come in and sit down with you and you can walk through the different scenarios or even look at their spouse's benefits, that again creates trust and it gives them an opportunity to really understand what they're signing up for and leading to less surprises in the year to come. And then I'm gonna kick it over to my friend, Greg here to talk about open enrollment in a hybrid workforce. Thanks, Fallon. Um, so we're pivoting here for a little bit. Can you hop to the next slide for me? Thank you. So really what we wanna do here is give you some specific examples, some actual tangible takeaways that you can do as you're maybe approaching your open enrollment season or as you're planning for your open enrollment season in 2023. So. A big thing that I usually recommend and try to do, especially in today's environment, because let's be real, things have really have changed so much over the last three years. I would say some of you are probably sitting on the phone saying, Greg, Fallon, I've been doing virtual sessions for a long time now. We've had employees all over the country uh, for the last decade, and, and, and this really just kind of didn't change too much for us. But then I know there are a lot of clients, too, that are sitting uh, or people that are sitting on this call saying, you know what? Yeah, we really had to find a solution. Um, rush to find that solution because 
you know, everybody started, all of a sudden everybody was home and we had to figure out a way to start messaging to them. So now we're a few years into this thing and it's kind of the new normal, but as maybe some of you have staff coming back to the office and you still have hybrid based people where there are some people are in on some days and home on others days, you really have to make sure that you're thinking about the ways through which and the manners through which you're going to message your open enrollment to them, which I'm sure you already are. A couple of, couple of ideas for you though. Um, we've had some a lot of success in hosting in-person and virtual sessions. The nice thing is sometimes you could even host the in-person sessions and record that session as well. So it's kind of a double whammy, um, but definitely uh, do both if you're going to have people in the office and at home. Uh, I just think it's, I encourage it that way. Uh, just having somebody at their disposal, one-on-one -on -one potentially that they could talk to in an in-person setting is great. And then you could also facilitate that same one-on-one -on -one just not in an in-person setting, but also, but in a virtual setting using technology like schedule once or something like that, where you could set up times 15 minute increments, if you will, with where they could speak with a benefit advisor or a financial wellness educator and really walk them through whatever the decisions were that were made at open enrollment. So that's the first, that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is to really make sure that you're leveraging or whoever your benefits partner is, is leveraging a strong tech platform. And what do I mean by tech platform? Because that can mean a million different things. Really for the purpose of this conversation, what I wanted to hone in on is using something like Zoom webinar, using something like um, uh, Teams version of Zoom webinar. I forgot exactly what the name of that is, but it's not your normal Zoom meeting. It's actually very similar to what we're using today. Uh, gives you a little bit more of ability to do some unique things, really engage the audience. Like Fallon was saying, really start using some unique graphics and push outs via the messaging center in whatever the webinar platform is that you're using. Um, but just make sure that it's a little bit different because keeping the participant engaged is very, very difficult. And as you all said during the polling process, the thing that you everybody struggled with the most was getting your staff to understand the offerings in general. And that is, and you're not alone, by the way, that is often the number one issue. I mean, in, in everybody's defense, in, in the participants' defense, I don't know, I've been doing this for 12 and a half years now, and I, I quite frankly don't know what else in life that people pay so much for, regardless of how good the employer contribution is, that they just don't, that they understand the least. Right. I mean, it's it's true. So we could do we could have to really, really educate. And the thing I'm always talking to my clients and prospective clients about, too, is how do you maximize the value of your offerings? Right. If you're going to spend that much money on something, which let's be real. And a lot of them for a lot of employers, it's second, third, fourth largest line item on the books, period. Crazy statement to say, but it's true. If you're going to spend that much money on something, Let's make sure that you're going to get the actual value out of spending that money, spending that much. And you can't value something in my mind personally, unless you understand it. So that's really what makes this process dynamic and what makes it important to Fallon's point to educate throughout the plan year. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about that as well in a couple of minutes. Um, but yeah, really leverage that tech platform. I'm a little biased to Zoom webinar only because it's the one I know the best, but I've had a lot of experience with it. Um, and a good experience with it. I know Zoom, some challenges from a security standpoint with that, depending on what entity you are. We've had, knock on wood, a lot of good luck with that. So that's, that's the one that's near and dear to my heart. But I know there's a million of them out there now. And there's some, I've seen some really slick ones and participated in some really slick ones that are actually like standalone third-party tech platforms that actually facilitate event-based webinars, which is really cool. They could change backgrounds and really make you look like you're almost in a uh, a virtual room together. Um, so just some really cool things to think about if you, uh, if, if you want to. Um, and then Valen already nailed this earlier, but I'm gonna, I wanna second it. Invite spouses and partners to listen in. Um, spouses, partners, even we've had dependents join. They're on the plan too. Maybe like an 18, 19 year old dependent. I mean, let's be real. They could be on all the way up till 26. So um, that's a, you know, there, a lot of them could be working fully, fully employed uh, people. So I'm sure most of them are at some point, um, have them join. Uh, I really feel like that could be uh, move the needle from an understanding standpoint, because regardless of what happens, um, with, with what us effectively messaging to the end user, maybe the employee at some point, we all know it's going to be really hard for them to rearticulate back to their families. 
So by having them join, I think it could be a really good uh, experience. And we've had a lot of success with that with some of our clients too. Um, so that's just an, another, uh, another really little bit tidbit for you or takeaway for you. The right, next- that's, a great, that's a great point about the video and, and being able to share it again so people can see it outside of just reading the statement. I like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and to balance point too, I, I hope I said this, but just to reiterate again, make sure you record. Record the sessions. Um, a lot of the tech platforms now, they'll allow you to record to the cloud, which is really nice. So it's not like you have this really jumbo file like we used to have, and it was, you, you know, you had trouble just emailing it to back and forth to somebody. It's a cloud-based, it's link-based, and really leverage that, like Fallon is saying, and now you have it for, for people who maybe missed the session, for the families of the session, if they couldn't make it, but also for new hires too. So you could even have them listen in on the actual open enrollment meeting, which is really nice. The next thing, Fallon, if you don't mind hitting one more, thank you is um, I always recommend, not always, but if you have the audience for it and you think it's going to be an effective way um, to really hash things out with your employee base, especially like Fallon was saying, if you uh, do some changes to your plans, maybe some some substantial plan changes, you're offering a new benefit, you're making a carrier change, you're pivoting to self-funding, there's a million different things that can go on out there. But following up these virtual and in-person group sessions with one-on-one sessions could be really dynamic. Um, Gives people an opportunity to ask questions. I know whenever I'm helping my clients out in these, um, I'm always offering during these group sessions, look, we fully understand that asking questions relative to your own healthcare, your own health plan could be really awkward in general, let alone in a group setting. So feel free, I usually say to reach out to me or what we've done in some cases is even set up these follow-up one-on-one sessions. Um, and then you could, uh, you know, that person to feel comfortable to ask just in a one-on-one setting, maybe some things that are going on with them or their families and how that might impact um, their premium or their deductible outlay, their copayment outlay, or their overall healthcare experience and network access over the course of the following plan year. So just a really good thing to think about um, as you're doing that. I really also think it goes back to that value discussion. You could really hammer home, make sure people are somewhat comfortable. I don't think we could ever get somebody fully comfortable with their offerings, but more confident in what they're walking into, what their solutions are, what their offerings are. And it puts you in a better seat, hopefully from an administrative perspective, if you are wearing that HR hat, to maybe get a little bit more less questions down the road, maybe. Uh, right, that's a good point though, too, because using your broker to ask the questions too can help maybe employees feel more comfortable if they don't want to break, talk about that even with HR at their own company. So yeah. kind of partnering and pairing with a third party is a good idea. Yeah, really good point. Maybe they're just not comfortable discussing it with their employer. Albeit, I know I'm just a third, you know, they don't know, really know me well, but the Fallon's point, it's a third party entity. It's maybe somebody that they could feel they can voice some more things to. Um, I mentioned it earlier, we like to use schedule ones for that. I've also just done it where we'll book a block of time. I actually was doing, I did it this past Monday and uh, for a client and we just blocked off, we blocked off two hours and we said, okay, you know, sign up if you want to sign up in increments over the course of two hours. I was, I just kind of kept my Zoom channel live like this. And as people popped in, I got messaged and uh, I hopped back live and we were able to kind of go back and forth with each other and answer questions. And you could even do that off the anniversary as well. So we'll talk a little bit about that next uh, in a couple of minutes here. The last one um, relative to facilitating open enrollment is to really make sure you have a strong bit admin platform. I fully understand. Uh, well, let me define bit admin first, and then we could go into the, the secondary part here. Bit admin platforms can mean a million different things. Really, it's a way for a technology-based solution that people can use to interact with their benefits. Really, it's the way they're going to be enrolling in their benefits if you are using an online solution. Um, Similar to what I was saying earlier, many of you might have already had this for a long time, uh, especially the larger the entity, the more common full-blown HRIS and Ben Admin systems have been. Uh, But then I I do know a lot of clients that came 2020 and it was, okay, time for us. What are we going to do? We used to use paper. I'm I'm not going to be able to get paper to anybody. What's the platform we could use? So maybe you found a solution then. Luckily, we've advanced here. You know, we're in the third year open enrollment of this now. So hopefully you have a solution. But if you don't, or if you did put one in open enrollment in during um, the pandemic, 
maybe it's time to kind of assess and see, really choose if that is the right one, if that's working correctly for you. Uh, but because there's a million out there now. We, what we actually saw, it's a little like tidbit, little information uh, for you. Um, back in like the 2014, 15 timeframe, I, I was doing a lot of webinars like this on, um, on the popularity or the thought was just how popular exchange-based, private exchange-based solutions might become, which was a way for employers to say, here's a bucket of money. Okay, Mr. or Mrs. Participant, please go and use this bucket of money and use this tech platform and make all your own benefit elections. We're kind of out of the game of choosing the plan for you. I.e., the reason why I mentioned that is private exchange, private exchange solutions really never got off the ground. And what a lot of those tech systems did, those tech stacks and tech companies, is they then pivoted to Ben Admin. So just a little kind of history lesson for you relative to Ben Admin, but there's a lot of really good ones out there. Uh, it can also help you facilitate some of the things that Fallon was talking about. So she shared a bunch of really great statistics about how people want to um, really listen to or engage in the information you're providing to them. So some want to uh, be communicated by video. Some want to be communicated uh, old school style, like memo bays. Some people want uh, sim a simple email and there's everything in between. Um, so having a Ben Admin solution where you could put all of these things out there, maybe in addition to your employer internet site, or maybe it's one and the same, um, really valuable tool and a way for you to kind of make sure you're housing everything in one location. Um, so I think that's really it on facilitating OE. But let's talk about the actual education process itself quickly here. Um, so I know this is a little bit unique, but and you're going to have to bear with us a little bit here. But we here at Sentinel, and, and this isn't a Sentinel pitch, it's just our, my, my, it's the way we, we kind of go about open enrollment in general, or it's kind of our part of our backbone, is we really believe in trying to educate holistically. And I know holistically is an overblown term. Um, but just collectively talking about your insurance plan plans and your retirement plans at the same time could be really, really beneficial, especially at open enrollment. And some of you might be rolling your eyes saying, I can't even get the amount of stuff that we need to done in the 50 minutes that we have and then the 10 minutes of questions relative to our life, disability, medical, dental, vision, totally get that. But just even if it's a slide or two, try and put something retirement based in there wealth-based in there, fly-based, like Fallon was saying, financial planning-based in there. So the participant starts thinking about these things collectively. And then what that will do is that I'll allow you, start, start allowing you to maybe do some health and wealth, some deeper health and wealth education throughout the rest of the plan year outside of OE. But at least you're getting them to think about it the right way. Why is that important? Well, the reason why that's important and the reason why we believe in this thing called the intersection of health and wealth it's really whether people know it or not, healthcare expenses is going, healthcare is going to be one of their largest expenses in retirement. Everybody thinks of Medicare as an entitlement policy, and in a form it is, only one of its forms, right? A is really the only entitlement component of Medicare. And when it comes time to enroll in Medicare and when it comes time for retirement, and they maybe sit with a financial planner, and the financial planner says, you should budget X thousands of dollars a year for your healthcare and expenses in retirement their jaw hits the ground. And they're like, oh my goodness, I do not feel like I can do this. I might even make the decision and there's statistics, plenty of them out there to say, to show it that I you know what, I'm not ready. I can't retire because I'm not ready for healthcare expenses in retirement. As ridiculous as that sound might sound, that is true. So the more we can prepare people up front, regardless of where they fall in their career horizon, whether that's at the beginning or even at the tail end, the more we can prepare them and so that they know when that day comes that they, this isn't a shock to them and that it's not a shock to you as the, as the employer, um, the better off everybody will be. The other thing I'll say um, is there really is an intersection in your costs as the employer relative to um, the retirement readiness and needs of your employees. Let me explain. So I think we could all agree, regardless of the size that you are, everybody on here that's listening today, uh, meaning the size of employer, where you fall in the healthcare landscape, marketplace, insurance marketplace, um, age is going to be a major determinant of your rates, right? It just is a matter of fact. 
age, some of you claims are going to be involved, some of you trend rates and, and pooling rates are going to be involved, but age, no matter what, is going to be a ter determining factor. The more prepared you could get your participants for retirement and for healthcare and insurance in retirement, the, the lower potentially your average age of the population, and therefore downstream, lower the potential uh, a premium outlay that you might have or you're decreasing your potential downstream liability from a claims perspective. So it really is all interconnected. We could take that offline. Um, I think we actually are planning a health and wealth uh, webinar, another one come um, November or December of this year. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, but we go into much more detail on it, but just, just some, some, some things to think about uh, uh, food for thought there relative to that. The next point is, and, and I'm, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse here because we both said this, but um, educating throughout the year is so critical. One that I'm passionate about, if you couldn't tell based on what I was just saying, is Medicare planning. So Medicare planning throughout the year, critically important. What I mean by Medicare planning, even have two sessions, maybe like Medicare 1.0, and then graduate people, quote unquote, to 2.0. So do like a welcome to Medicare or intro to Medicare in January or February. So once OE has kind of the dust is settled, have it in, in Jan or Feb, and then have another one, your 2.0 in like September, because October is a really big Medicare month for some people. Um, and then you could kind of really get a really nice foundation for people, bring in third party experts, um, ask your broker or consultant if they have somebody available to do it. Um, a lot of, you know, we have an in-house expert here. Um, uh, and then even your carriers also have experts as well, that believe it or not, so that you could just tap into and it's free as you being part of a part of that carrier community. Uh, Social Security is another one. The other ones that I'm really, really would like highly encourage are the standalone ancillary policies that often go take a back seat at open enrollment i.e. the life insurance benefits that the people have available to them or even life insurance benefit uh, planning in general. Um, maybe people at the earlier beginning of their uh, earlier, earlier on in their career horizons who are starting families, life insurance planning could be really beneficial for them. Those maybe more towards the tail end of their, tail end of their career horizon, that social security planning could be really critical. Um, FSA, so flexible spending account education, standalone session could be really dynamic. Um, health savings account standalone session, highly encourage that if you have one, um, especially the HSA one, because in my mind, that's one of the best vehicles that bridges that insurance and retirement planning together. Um, so that's a really powerful vehicle and a really good thing to educate on. The next thing I'd encourage you to do is really try and have one-on-one -on -one sessions like we were talking about earlier, but maybe outside of what we were discussing. So outside of OE, with a financial wellness educator, a financial planner, whoever your advisor is to your retirement plan, perhaps they have a solution for you that they can start sitting one-on-one -on -one with an with a educator. And it can be really powerful if that educator is dangerous in a lot of these things that we've discussed on this slide. Insurance, uh, Medicare, uh, HSAs, FSAs, knowing how these all worlds interconnect, that could be a really powerful um, value add for your staff. The last thing I'd say, and this is kind of similar to what we were, what I mentioned on the last slide, just have a centralized hub. I know Fallon said the same exact thing. Um, have a unique space where everybody knows that they can go to, everybody has access to, no matter the time of the year, um, and try to drive engagement to that location, to that site more frequently than not, right? Don't just have it be once a year because then people are going to, what, what was that link again? What was that site? What is that file path? What is the internet site? Try and gamify it, if, even if you want to. Um, maybe set up some type of, oh, you're going to put some type of hidden clue or message on the internet site. Try to dig around and go into one of the sections and find the clue. Report back to HR and you get a gift card or, you know, we'll give three, the three first people who come to us, or probably you don't want to do the first people because then you'll lose engagement, but we'll give three random people uh, uh, a gift card if you could find whatever the clue that is. So just try and drive engagement and gamify the process. All right, so the other things I'll say, uh, and you could advance one more for me too, because I did talk about Ben Admin before, um, but try and find integrated partners or try and ask whoever you're working with today, 
what type of integration they have, or if they have integrated partners, who they might be to help both the employee experience, but also your experience as the administrator. And what do I mean by that integrated platforms? So what I mean by that um, is ask your insurance consultant, your insurance broker, do they work with some type of, or do they have integration with some type of third party or in-house solution relative to flexible spending accounts or health savings accounts or COBRA administration? The reason why that could be beneficial, somebody has a question, they get used to calling the same company. They get used to calling that company for their FSA questions, for their HSA questions, for their insurance needs, instead, perhaps, of knocking on your door first. I think that's a really critical component, something to really look at. You Having that integration as well could really alleviate some of the administrative burden of housing these plans, of having these plans as the employer, right? So having one system of record to go to, having one website to go to where you could see your retirement plan invoices and your FSA invoices and all of your contacts under one screen, extremely valuable and worth your time as well. So really look for that integration. There's been a lot of build out in the Ben Admin space that I mentioned before that benefits administration space relative to integration. Um, so a lot of them will have it built in preferred carriers that they already have um, API feeds with. A lot of them have preferred vendors, third-party vendors that are providing mental health solutions and EA standalone EAP guidance and all this cool stuff. So um, just be curious, ask your broker or consultant the question or your retirement plan administrator the question, um, really powerful. The other thing I'd say is have that single website. I know we've hammered this home at this point for all that for all their needs. So whether it's a retirement plan or the insurance plan, have one combined solution for that. And then the last thing I'd say, and this necessarily isn't an integrated platform or partner, but it does have to do with integration itself, the integration of health and wealth. Maybe look at implementing comprehensive benefit statements. A lot of you probably are already doing that. Um, so it's probably old news, but maybe it's a tidbit or an idea for some of you. What I mean by comp comprehensive benefit statements, provide employees at some point in the year a, an overview, a, a significant uh, overview of what it is that you are giving them, providing them as their employer relative to their benefits and their pay. Give them a full financial picture of what it is exactly you're outlaying from a premiums and cost perspective relative to match and their, your contributions, et cetera. And then also what is their outlay and then give them what a total value is. So everybody thinks of their salary as here's what I'm getting from my employer. Um, but in reality, they don't understand that, you know, you could be contributing 10, $20,000 more, if not more on top of their salary um, in total spend. And that often goes by the wayside. Am I promising you're going to get a ton of value out of the comprehensive benefit statements? No, but the effort's there. And then people will hopefully start to try and uh, look at those and get used to collecting those and receiving those. And the value will grow maybe over time. Um, so leaving you with a couple of statistics here, and then we'll go into one last little uh, takeaway. Um, but this just goes more into some of the stats and proof as to why you really need to, A, educate at open enrollment, B, educate throughout the plan year, but C, really look at things from a combined perspective, really educate about all of the things we discussed today, because there's so much intersection um, in the amount of stress that people feel, in the amount of um, planning that people do, and the amount of um, takeaways that they have, not at just open enrollment, but uh, throughout the year, and how you could better prepare them um, both in the, in the current term, so maybe potentially reduce absenteeism and increase presenteeism um, because they're feeling less stressed, they don't feel as their mental health isn't as impacted perhaps by the financial component because you're helping to prepare them more. Um, all of those things combined could really uh, make, full, make for a successful employee-employer relationship and then it will boost that value that I was discussing, discussing earlier. Um, but that Medicare figure is always flooring to me, and that's a 2016 figure, so that's old at this point. I, that's on me. I have to update that. Um, but that's 163000 on Medicare premiums alone. Um, that's way up. 
So um, that's just in Medicare premiums, let alone outlay, total cost outlay. So just goes to show you quite how, just how much somebody needs to have and how ill-prepared they might be, but there's no better time to start than the now, the present. So kind of bringing everything together here, um, you know, if you, if you could do some of the things we talked about today relative to education, relative to broadening their horizon in the terms of bringing health and wealth together, the more appreciative hopefully your staff will become and the more value you'll get out of your total benefits package. In addition, it can help to mitigate some of the risks that we associate and reduce some of the healthcare costs that we, that we had talked about because you are preparing people better in the now um, that they're gonna be more prepared in the future. And then um, that enhanced productivity, that reduced absenteeism, the increased presenteeism in the workplace by getting them in a more stable mental state when, as it, when it comes to benefit related expenses and the financial, str financial stress caused by benefits um, could really help. And then recognize, recognize a few different things. Recognize what we were saying earlier that this is a really, really hard thing. Benefits are extremely difficult. Um, like Fallon said earlier, as benefit administrators or benefit uh, or fiduciary, fiduciary, fiduciaries, co-fiduciaries to your plan by having them, so your retirement plans, by offering your insurance plans, but also by, um, by, uh, by, by leading on those who you work with, hopefully you can really get through to your participant base because it's only going to make them understand and value what it is that you're offering more. Um, so just recognize that it is really hard that the more you can educate, the more opportunities that you give people to kind of engage, ask questions, learn throughout the plan year, the better off you are. I'll, 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 I, I'm a realist though, I get it. Not everybody's always gonna engage. Not everybody's always going to um, do and learn exactly what you want, but it shouldn't stop us from trying. Um, so that's kind of, the, that's, that's a, the, big, the big takeaway for today. Um, so now we're at question mode. So we're gonna bring Kendall back in here. I think she's gonna help us with the Q&A a little bit. Um, so Kendall, do you mind? I think if everybody will just give us one moment so we could kind of go through the Q&A section and thank you for engaging with us in the Q&A section. Um, but give us a moment so we could take a look at these and then what we could do is we'll try to answer them. If we don't get to all of them, I think we have some time, but if we don't get to all of them or don't know all the answers today, we will definitely follow up with you to make sure um, we get whatever, uh, get to get an answer to you um, the best we can. And as they're going through just the questions right now, our contact information is on the screen. So if you ever want to reach out to us regarding benefits, open enrollment, or different ideas, that is our information. So make sure you take that down. Yeah, great point. Alrighty, we have um, quite a few questions. So as they trickle in, I'll, I'll take note, but I think we can start off with the first one. Um, are there any benefits that you struggle with year over year trying to explain? Greg, do you want to take that one? <laughs> well, I mean, if I had struggle explaining it, I probably wouldn't be doing my job well, but no, I'm just, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, uh, what, what do I see people struggling maybe to understand the most? I would say um, this is really simple in nature, but the acronyms. We're such an acronym heavy business that, and, and when we go to open enrollment sessions or educational sessions in general, and I, I'm, I am probably the worst at this that there is, but throwing around FSA, HRA, HSA, 401k, 403b, and the, you know, the list goes on and you forgetting that people have no idea sometimes what FSA means. Um, they just know it as the debit card that you could use for healthcare. You know what I mean? So just using that could be um, something that maybe I do personally struggle with and I know people struggle with is staying away from them or at least making sure you define them at the beginning of your sessions and continue to define them throughout the session so that people really can understand what they're dealing with. I know that was probably not the best one, but found maybe uh, maybe uh, have my back here or-, or, or Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. I think those are in the benefit space. We can use acronyms or it just makes sense to us what we're reading. And we have to realize that a lot of the employees they're overwhelmed. This is not in their day-to-day -day world and really try to slow it down um, and show real life examples. I know for people that have traditional plans and then they're moving to a high deductible plan, that can be really scary for them. And some people will stay on 
a higher cost plan than they really need to because they see a deductible and they're just overwhelmed by the thought of it and they don't want to do the math. So um, giving them an opportunity for our, you know, one-to-one -one sessions. So you can say, let's really break down like what your cost history has been um, and your health history and see if there's a plan that makes more sense for you. So I just think that, you know, it's that seeing a dollar spend you have to pay before you get insurance can be very um, hard for those that have made a change and have had a different type of plan before. Thanks. What else do we have here, Kendall? We have, okay, next up, is the Medicare figure shown an annualized figure from the statistics? Oh, great question. No, that was over, I believe that was over um, your expected career um, retirement horizon. So no, that 163 was not per year. Um, that's the premiums paid over your retirement horizon. But what that didn't include was, uh, and I think I say this, but just to reiterate, um, that doesn't include some of the Medicare deductibles and co-payments that you're going to be exposed to. So um, that's uh, that was a great question, though. Sorry for not defining that better. And Greg, I know you mentioned this, and we've done it at Sentinel. We've had like our broker, or, or no, we've actually had like Blue Cross Blue Shield come in and do a Medicare session, and it is so helpful to the folks that are retiring, but it's also helpful to HR professionals. So I have a little bit more understanding of what Medicare looks like because you probably sometimes do get questions from folks and you're, you're like, I have no idea. Um, so having a little bit more information, I, I personally find is helpful, but I also lean on my broker too, to kind of navigate those. But I think more knowledge is power. Yeah, actually the great one too, because I even say it's even good for those whose parents are approaching retirement phase stage. Absolutely. As well. So you could, you know, engage those people, that piece of your population too, and say, hey, look, you, you could even call it out. Like those maybe who are thinking about Medicare or plan, doing some retirement financial planning. And then those of you who maybe just want to learn, but also have parents who are re approaching retirement based age, engage them because um, maybe they could bring some stuff home to their parents um, to help them as they're trying to navigate that complex Medicare process. No, it's such a great point. I know my mom recently went through it. And when she was talking, I'm like, I know what that is. Let me add some color to that. So it's definitely yeah. um, applicable. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Next up we have, if you're making a big change, how do you ensure that your employee population really understands the change and makes a smart decision for themselves or the family for the year? So that I'll take, I'll take a stab at it, Greg, and then you can come in. So I think the biggest thing, if there's a big change happening, that you really make sure that you're over communicating that change. So whether you're doing it in person, you're following up with an email, um, maybe then you're sending out short videos. I think repetition is key because otherwise people could really avoid just one meeting and not really understand it and then get hit with all of these bills later on because their plan has entirely changed or they selected the plan that didn't really work the best for them. So I think communication is key. I think other ways you could do it to um, Greg's point is you could kind of do some fun raffles, um, raffles for people being in meetings um, that stay so you know they have to pay somewhat attention so make it a gamified process so there is a little bit more forced engagement because they believe they're going to get something out of it but it's also really helping them understand what's happening yeah that's a good one game of, i'm always a fan of gamifying people people love that i think the other thing i'd encourage survey survey the population not not too soon after OE, maybe a couple of months later. Um, I haven't done a ton of this candidly for, for a lot of my clients haven't done a ton of this, but I think the more I think about it, probably the more we should. We usually, you know, like to do it at the mid-year point of the year so that we can start doing some planning relative to the renewal and, and what changes to make that way. But it probably would be a good idea to do a quick brief survey, maybe following OE and getting people's feedback. And you could really, you could ask the question directly, how educated on your benefits do you feel? Um, and, and see what kind of feedback you're gonna get. Uh, it's not always the best answer, but at least it's real. Um, and you can get something to kind of build off of. But I, I, I'd probably recommend that that's another kind of thing that you could do to gauge how people, how well people are understanding the process. And I think just to add one last thing to that, is like, if you can send, if there's calculators or tools that you have at your disposal yeah. that people can use and kind of put in, um, you know, what they anticipate, that could really help them understand it as well. Yep. Any out of the box ideas relative to making benefits understanding more fun? I think that's the gamify one. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. the most exciting one I think you can do because to your point, Greg, it, it makes people have 
to force to be engaged because they have opportunity for a prize or money or whatever it might be. Yeah. So like an actual way to engage that I've had some clients who have done questions throughout. So you do a question, you could do a question slide um, to break up the open enrollment presentation, for instance. And then it's just really trying to reiterate uh, something important that was on, it was in the content prior to it. For instance, um, our deductible changed. How much did it change between from this year to last year? I'm just throwing it out there and then put your answer in the chat and the first person to get it right wins a gift card. You know what I mean? Something like that. So you could really um, gamify it that way. Uh, and, and there's a ton of other ways you could do it, but um, I always think making it more fun, um, it, the better off, the better off you are. I also know if you're doing, you know, a type of an event, so if you're having like a financial planning day where you like bring in different speakers. Um, so I think there's different opportunities outside of open enrollment where you can kind of really engage your staff. So like I mentioned our wellness month, like um, prior to COVID, we had like a biometrics day. So everyone could sign up and get biometrics and then talk to a coach about like nutrition. So there's different ways that you can take your benefits that you have today to help engage your staff in fun ways that is actually ultimately going to help their health um, and wealth in the long term. So I would encourage you to think about different ways when you're setting up your strategy for the year. I love that. Yeah, ingrain some of that stuff with get takeaways. And there's a lot of things you could do now too, virtually. Some are, you know, obviously the biometrics are a little different, but setting up time with a healthcare, with a, with a coach, like Fallon said, with a, uh, um, what did you say? You said with a- uh, Like a nutritionist, yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of virtual things you could do now too, which is really cool. Virtual yoga. I know you're always setting up like the virtual workout classes too for staff and then using those and, and then do maybe doing a topic 30 minutes before that. And then you get the free workout class if you join. I, something like that could really help too. And I'd encourage everyone on the call to work with your broker because when you're working with your vendors, sometimes they have opportunities that are paid for or free or materials you can actually use to repurpose to educate your staff. So definitely um, lean on those partners. Okay, next up. Do you have a favorite platform that you like to use the best? I think this is probably around an admin if I had to guess, but whoever answered the que asked the question, if not, just um, just put it, pop, it, pop your question in the chat or something like that again. Um, but for Ben Admin platform, oh geez, there's so many out there now. Um, our, the one that we use here at Sentinel is um, Employee Navigator, not at Sentinel, but what, one of the solutions we have for our clients. At Sentinel, we actually use um, ADP system, open enrollment system, Ben Admin system. Uh, but that's actually a good pivot. The larger you are, the more complex a system I'd recommend. So it really depends on the size, right? So that's kind of a difficult one to kind of lock down, but I'm happy to have an individual conversation with you on it. Um, if there are multiple people that have the same question. Uh, but I'd say another thing to really take in mind is we were talking about integrated platforms and partners earlier. Make the biggest thing I could make, I would want you to make sure is that your payroll, whoever you choose on the Ben admin or platform based side, has integration with your payroll company and really strong integration with your payroll company uh, because it's just going to make your life easier, participants' life easier. Uh, it just it, it builds in so much. It's just a total it's a total better experience. So um, I'd recommend that. Greg, I was going to say the same thing. And um, there's different systems you can use, but if you can have a carrier connection that directly ties from payroll to the system and you're not manually having to log in and plug people in, it just saves your staff so much time where they can be focusing on higher level strategic things and manually entering. And it can also help with your billing. So you have less mistakes they have to correct and you know pay forward and then get the credit back. Um, I remember those days long ago and I the carrier connection is the number one thing I would recommend. And I always advocate for if we're changing something to ensure that one has a carry connector. All right, we have one last question. How do you engage employees during OE season? My employees sometimes look glazed over and I wanna make sure they're paying attention. I think Greg, your point of um, gamifying during the actual session to like make sure people are awake. Um, I think benefits, just to be totally candid, can be very boring. So there's a lot of information. So if you can, on your webinar slides, show more infographics and funner stuff where they can actually look at it and digest it, 
and talk less, but give space for more Q and A and give space for more one-to-ones, people might be more alert during your session. Yeah, I have nothing to add. That was perfectly said. Or polling too, I think. Polling, I think polling yeah. is polling always is a good thing. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Great questions as well. Um, this webinar was recorded, so we didn't get that question. I think this is the first webinar in a while that we've done that we didn't get a question regarding it, whether this was going to be recorded or not. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but uh, we uh, will record it. It will be posted to our web. Um, Kendall, will we be distributing these to uh, anybody attended to, or is it just going to be on the web? Do you know? Um, it'll be on the web and then also uh, via email too. Okay, for perfect. Um, so those are there. There's also a whole suite of prior webinars and recordings that are on our web. So the same location. So I definitely encourage you to uh, check that one out. The next thing is our next live session will be on November 9th. It's going to be on employee wellness programs. So a really kind of nice pivot and uh, build off, off of this one. Um, two great presenters for that. So highly recommend you join us on November 9th for the employee wellness programs. But uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for your engagement. Hopefully we gave you a couple of good takeaways. I know that's my own, my big thing is whatever I'm listening to with webinars, what can I have that's actual tangible that I could bring back to the office tomorrow or, you know, going right back to the office, my desk now um, and actually implement for, for the company. So uh, hopefully we gave you a few things of those. I know we talked high level, but hopefully we gave you some tangible takeaways too. Uh, and I hope everybody has a great afternoon.